first things first, I'm going to send you through your Caddick tool. Oh shit, yeah, I'm going to need a character sheet. Dirk Firebraid. Oh, a human man. I love that. I'm going to give you some freedom here. What does Dirk Firebrand look like? Or Dirk Firebraid, I should say. What does he look like? Dirk Firebraid, he is just shy of five foot two. Mm -hmm. He is quite on the scrawny side. Uh, but he's a nimble boy, right? He's he's a bit scrawny. He's growing. He's attempting to grow a beard, right? He's he's got this like prepubescent vibe about him, even though he's well in his, however you know, middle ages. But like he just can't grow a beard for shit. Like he envies those who are tall and handsome with wicked beards. And so he's just like you know, one day, one day it could it will be me. But he is a bit. He's pasty, scrawny. And his beard is besheveled and patchy, but he's doing his best. He also knows the magics. Yeah, I mean, he's good at that, you know. He, he, he grew up on it his entire life. So he's, 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 he's book smart up the butt. Yeah, he's been hitting the books his entire life, mainly as a source of, um, you know, refuge from the bullying he got all the way through his childhood. Why can't you even grow a moustache, <laughs> dude? Alrighty, we've got the uh, the thorough thorough download on Dirk there. From Don't Mates. ask me to paint a picture because I've got heaps of brushes. <laughs> oh mate, you've got a palette full of chop. I can't draw for shit, but I will fucking give you a backstory. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so moving in. Dim the lights, Stephen. Thanks. Sugar-scented air tickles your nostrils as your space gondola carves through the glassy hypnotic waves of limbo. Can we just... Oh, okay. I was about to be like, can we just pause for a second? Because I'm like, you said space gondola. Not something attribute I usually attribute to Dungeons & Dragons. All right, I'm in a space gondola, limbo. <laughs> Everything smells of a, a hot bakery. <laughs> <laughs> You've painted a picture I'm in, let's go It would almost be beautiful The moment would be perfect It would be serene If not for the huge toad-like creature Flailing after you Behind you and your space gondola As it weaves and cuts through this Trail of colours And rocks turn into squirrels And squirrels turn into pterodactyls And you've got this oar in one hand And you're eh, 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 eh Pushing the gondola along as this giant toad-like creature chases Fucking after you. Hell. Well, we all know what I, that is. I would like for you to run. Oh, it. <laughs> yeah, shit. Okay, <laughs> maybe I don't. A history check. With my plus one, with my plus three, that's 16, 17, 18. 18. You know for sure, being where you are in limbo, there is a big red slard chasing you. This is bad news. Get away from me, you big fucking slut! I told you! I'm not interested in copulating the way you do it. It's nasty. And I paddle as fast as I can. You hear a... <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Give me that biscuit! And it uh, follows after you, and it starts... It, pushes its claw into whatever's around it and it seems to be like kneeling on it was a leaf and then it became a piece of stone and then it became a piece of astral drift globe and then it became a piece of wood and it's just how are you even doing this what is happening how did i get here you and i are going to become tummy friends i fucking hate the sound of that mate please you won't hate it when you're screaming in my belly <laughs> Please stop. Just wait. Just wait. 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 I keep paddling with one arm. I'm frantic. Mm -hmm. I, he's fucking sweating it. This cunt, right? Like, so I, I'm paddling with one arm, and I'm gonna like turn, focus all my attention as much as I can while I'm still trying to like haphazardly paddle. I've got one other arm outstretched at the slard, and I'm gonna attempt to fire off a firebolt. Oh righty! Right uh, at his he huge head, because I have huge heads, mate. So I'm I'm just going to aim for the <laughs> biggest part of the cunt. <laughs> uh, all right, go for it. So I'll get you to roll a d20, and then if you can plus five to it. Plusing five. What a hot unit! 
shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's a oh, that is... That's a natural one, which means <laughs> this can only okay. go poorly. I didn't think we'd have to use this for a while because the maths would say otherwise. But <laughs> you're Shut right. up. I don't need you to talk about <laughs> statistically. This is very unlikely. What have you done? I don't need that right now, Spud. <laughs> I'm going to get you to roll a D10 for me, please. A D10? And we will see what randomly happens to you. Seven. Um, <laughs> you hear a, what the fuck? As you switch places with this giant frog-like creature <laughs> and he ends up in your space gondola and you are kneeling on what looks like a piece of slate just coasting <laughs> through <laughs> this rapid, uh, you know, it's kind of like water but you think it's switched into looking like oil. I look at my left hand, now doesn't have an oar in it. I look at my right hand and be like, then looking up, Classic Looney Tunes cartoon, Wile E. Coyote. Ah, fuck. <laughs> and then I start with both hands, turn this slate around and start paddling through the muck, through the oil in the opposite direction quite frantically. Oh, oh God, we got to get out of here. <laughs> you hear a, oh, what was going on? And you see this giant red slab. He turns in your space condor. Like he's, he can easily like put his long, daggly arms in the water and he starts eh, eh, using it. This is much better than what he was using to chase you before and he starts coming towards you. Um, I look back over my shoulder as I'm trying to frantically go away and I'm like, oh, he's getting closer. And then I look forward and I'm paddling a bit more. And then I look back again and I'm like, oh shit, he's, oh, shit, he's gay. And then I paddle a bit more and then I look back one more time and I'm like, this is pointless. And I just sort of reside myself and I stop and then I turn to face him and then I might try one more time. Uh, Ray of Frost at the gondola. Let's go the gondola. That's a good idea. But what I will say to you is this. Dirk, as you're turning, you notice, and it's in with the arm's reach, there is it appears to be a flask or a potion with like a bubbling liquid on, a, on this, whatever this thing is, drifting past you. You can either... Cast your spell or grab the flask oh, and okay. drink it. Here's my question to you, Mr. DM. Mm -hmm. Could I cast a spell with disadvantage while attempting to clutch at the potion at the same time? I'm going to let you because this is a podcast. <laughs> Fuck yes. <laughs> Roll two d20s. Take the lowest... Fucking here we go. Come on, come on, TNT gods. Give me some shit, you fuckers. <laughs> 2d20s. Let's go. The lowest of the... <laughs> oh, two <laughs> seven tens. It's supposed to happen. <laughs> Roll a d8 of frost. I'm making up these numbers here. Oh, it's a hot Oh, one. and an eight. Maximum damage. You gotta risk it for the biscuit, guys. You do. Well done. We'll say what happens is you turn after you're going, what the fuck, let's just go. You start casting your spell, you let off the ray of frost, and after your hand passes through the last movement of the summoning of the spell, you reach out and you grab this flask. Gotcha, you fuck. The spell goes off, you hit the gondola, and the front of it completely freezes. And for a second, it gets heavier at the front end. Oh, yes. And it kind of tips forward a little bit and the front of the gondola snaps off and it begins to spin. Dirk's eyes widen. He's clutching the, um, the, the new potion, but his eyes are fixed on the gondola to just see how this is going to play out to see if he's safe enough yet or, or what. The gondola begins to spin and you can see this large red slab like... He's got these huge cord hands like up in the air. He's trying to get himself centered and it, it just doesn't seem to be working for him. And then bang, right in front of him where it looked like a liquid of various types, a wall of iron just appears and he just goes, he just hits it head on. And you see him fall out and disappear under what looks like a mixture of uh, stones and Tar and lava and rainbows. Oh my god, this place is whacked. I hate it. 
a, a little sigh of relief and then attention straight to the to the weird potion that looked good enough to grab for some reason. Dirk still doesn't quite understand what instincts took over him to grab it in the first place, but now he's inspecting it with great sort of curiosity. You look into this this kind of weird potion bottle that almost looks like a tear. And when you look into it, it's like a purpling, bubbling liquid. And when you study it a bit closer, these little mouths come up from inside the liquid and appear to be, like, moaning at you. They form a face, and then the face moans and it pops. I hate that. I will get you to make a wisdom saving throw. Oh, no. Okay, here we go. Fifteen. That is enough. I love that. (laughs) You felt for a moment, Dirk, like this potion was willing you to drink it. Oh, shit. (laughs) Ooh. Do I feel the urge to, like, discard it as quickly as possible? You think the longer you spend with it, it could perhaps get the upper hand on you. Mm. Dirk is going to reactively just tip it out. Just tip it out into the sea of madness. Dirk, you look over the side of this weird drifty slate thing and as you you pull the cork out the top of it and you are starting to tip it out and as you do, this large red clawed hand pops out of the water and the slard has gone under this and is coming up and you hear it, you see it going, I'm gonna... And you just tip it into its mouth (laughs) as as it comes up. And as you tip it in, the red slard's face starts to dissolve oh shit as it disintegrates and starts to fall back you see a red gem starting to kind of fall and come loose in the slard's head (gasps) i'm gonna thrust out my other hand that's not tipping the bottle into this guy's mouth and try to try to grasp that you can easily grab it from here amazing you grab it you have this long red gem in your hands would you like to make an intelligence check for me to see if you can find out what this is no no of course i would of course i I shouldn't have fucked with you that's a hot one you got no idea (laughs) you you look down and you go feel like that's important (laughs) you have no idea Hmm. i'm just gonna be like oh yeah stuff it into my (laughs) stuff it into my pocket (laughs) be like oh yeah sure (laughs) (laughs) and then you turn and look to where you were going where the gondola had spun and then kind of failed and gone and you see a large cliff face that kind of is suspended in nowhere there doesn't seem to be any substance to it but you're in limbo so what the fuck is happening and within seconds you're about to go over the edge into god knows where what do you say as you go over this ledge fashioned with all materials and creatures and weird things in limbo as you fly out into god knows where oh well this is just my luck it echoes out into limbo and all you hear back is well why did you come here you fuck (laughs) end scene (laughs) (laughs) Dirk Dirk is not <laughs> for this world. So you can tell why he's struggled his entire life. 